I always thought that as a Christian, God will take care of me and nothing will happen to me. So I didn't take care of my health. Uh, I took for granted, you know, that even if I worked long hours and I didn't get enough sleep, I would be fine. My journey this past year has also made me uh, realise that we need to put God first in our lives. When we put Him first in our life, everything else will fall in place. I'm Jenny Lai and I come from Singapore. I studied commerce in school, so naturally I uh, went into office work. Uh, but I'm someone who cannot sit still. Uh, I don't like to sit behind a desk. And so I applied for, to be a teacher and I've been in education for about 30 years. Initially, I was with the primary school children, but about 11 years ago, I was asked to lead a school for children with autism. I used to work very hard and do a lot of things myself. I started feeling unwell in August last year. Um, I started bleeding and losing weight and appetite. And by December, I was very sick. After about two weeks of tests and checkups, uh, the doctor told me that I had stage 4 cancer of the womb. And uh, she asked me to prepare mentally. Should anything occur, I mean, to, for a sad person like her to die. And I wasn't prepared for that. I have actually six months to live if I don't receive treatment, and one to one and a half years if I receive treatment. So I stayed in the hospital for three and a half months. But after six weeks, the doctor told me that um, the chemotherapy was not working. So my oncologist at that point in time said that why not let's try immunotherapy. So we started on immunotherapy in March this year. And sometime in April, the results came back from the States. And the results said that there was actually no treatment for me. That means there were no drugs available for my cancer. There, uh, it was through urging of one Dr. Karen's Ng from New Start, the Wema, uh, they encouraged me to go ahead asking the church pastors to pray for her. Then when they came to do the anointment, okay, then the whole church came to know about it. At the point in time of my life, um, you know, I found it so difficult to pray because, you know, I was the one lying in the hospital bed, you know, and people would come and go, they pray with me, I listen to songs and sermons. But I didn't know what the future was like, you know, because I really didn't know what to expect, you know, and treatment was not working. One door after another was closed in my face. And even with immunotherapy, you know, I didn't know whether it's going to work for me. When uh, Jenny's husband, Sonny, called me one day, he says, Pastor, please pray for my wife. You know, I, I thought, What's, what happened? And then at that time, Sonny told us about Jenny's condition. We realized that in human term, we cannot do anything. And that's the real, when we felt hopeless, we can bring it before the Lord. And that's when we started praying. I went to Jenny, I prayed for her. And I know that only God can do the miracles. And as the church started to know about her condition, the church member came together right here in this church. We pleaded with the Lord, we prayed and prayed because we know that God hears and answers our prayer. Young and old, everybody came together and prayed, just prayed and I know with all my heart that God's hand was, is upon Jenny. I believe by faith as the body of Christ come together to pray, miracles is going to happen. I stayed in the hospital for three and a half months. Uh, I actually dreaded coming home, you know, and I didn't know how my family was going to cope. 
you know, but when I came back and I had a lot of time, uh, I had time to actually read the Bible, I had time to reflect on my life, to look at my priorities. And sometime in May, I decided that I will start going back to church, you know, but it was um, not a pleasant experience for me, maybe because I was going back in a wheelchair, you know, and also I was thinking what people would think of me, you know, but uh, when I went back, the members were all very welcoming. And I learned that when I was in hospital, uh, they had prayer circles, which they never ever had before, you know, and they, through the prayer circles, in fact, many of them uh, were encouraged in their prayer life, and many of them have also told me that, um, you know, my, my experience had also uh, encouraged them to renew their walk with God. I saw the benefit of being in a small group because I had been in a small group from 2012 up to the present time and I saw the benefits and I wanted, I just felt like this was something God was calling uh, me to do and to encourage the ladies to do and so I prayed about it and for the first few weeks hardly anyone was coming. God this is not what you want me to do because hardly anybody was turning up. But week after week there would be one new person who would turn up and then the next week they wouldn't turn up and I, I kept on praying. When I came back in April, uh, there was a women's cell group that was in church, started in church, but it was not doing very well because uh, it was not situated in a central place. So I offered my home for a cell group. Jenny is one of the most amazing women with a heart of pure gold. She would do absolutely anything for anybody. I told God that use me, you know, and so whenever there's any request, I will say yes. Because I, I told God, you know, um, if you ask, you know, I will go. In October itself, uh, in the next scan, it showed that the tumour had shrunk to 1.1 centimetres. So he removed the womb and then they, he sent it for tests. And when I met him uh, in October, at the end of October, sometime early November, he told me that the biopsy showed that there were no more malignant cancer cells. I guess I'm very thankful for life, you know. Um, given the initial diagnosis, uh, I should have died like six months ago. But I'm still alive and I'm well, you know. So I'm very grateful uh, to be given a second lease of life. I think it's important to live each day to the best. You know, and uh, leave the future to God yeah, because uh, there's no point in planning or thinking of the future you know, when anything can happen in life. My life is uncertain because I do not know, uh, you know where it's going to lead you know, so I do not know what my life is like you know, but I also know that death is something everybody has to go through, right? But God promises us that He's preparing a place for us and He will come and bring us back there so he's giving us an open ticket, you know, to heaven and we need to make sure that when we're here on earth, you know, to be ready for him when he comes. So I think on a daily basis, it's important to ensure that we have that relationship with Jesus, you know, because he gives us certainty you know, about the future. So I'm very grateful for every day, you know, that I can wake up and at the end of the day, I thank him, you know, that he has sustained me through the day.